you know, there's a street mission in New York City that's been there for many, many years that preaches the gospel. And uh, they have a big sign on it that says, sin will find you out. And it also says, that, you know, sin itself deceives. The New Testament personifies sin as if it was a person that has the capacity or power to deceive. It's not just that the devil deceives or false prophets and false teachers deceive. It's not just that we deceive ourselves, although all of that is true and part and parcel of the same process. But sin itself has a capacity to deceive. I have a love and a burden, for instance, for black people. Uh, and being born in the United States, I've always thought that they got the wrong end of the stick and everything. But we have a situation now where a black woman in the United States, an Afro-American woman, is five times more likely to have an abortion than a Caucasian woman, okay? And two and a half times more likely to have an abortion than a Hispanic woman, but five times more likely to kill her baby in her womb, with no medical reason, than a white woman. And although it's an across-the-board problem affecting every ethnicity and race, three out of four black children in the United States are born out of wedlock. No husband, no father. Food stamps and the welfare check have replaced the husband and father as the breadwinner and provider for the family. Three out of four black children are born into that. Now, those two things alone are indictments. Sin. But sinners don't like to blame themselves. And in fact, when we sin, we have nobody to blame except ourselves, other, of course, than the devil. There are those who can be used of the devil to put stumbling blocks or to tempt, but it's our decision. Unless somebody is willing to take responsibility for their own sin, that sin is going to deceive them. So, you just look now. What's happening? There's a lot of political pressure due to COVID, a lot. It's been politicized. It's difficult to know where the science ends and the politics begin. You don't know what to believe. The World Health Organization is a corrupt bureaucracy that's politically manipulated by China and so forth. It's a stupid organization. You don't know what to believe. We just know it's being politically manipulated. For instance, the rigged vote counting Without COVID, Donald Trump would still be the president. You don't understand. That that's how it works. Um, now, let's look at this. So there's a lot of social and political pressure to get a vaccine. I understand that. But vaccines normally have to be subjected to tests and to see if the side effects, to see how well they work. Academic papers about vaccines, like any other pharmacological publication, have to be subject to peer review. But dissenting medical and scientific opinion is being suppressed by social media. Those scientists and physicians who question it are not having their voices heard due to political pressure. Well, where are the guinea pigs going to be? This past week, a great American sports hero, he hit more home runs in American baseball than anyone else. He actually beat Babe Ruth's record. Tremendous athlete and a nice person. Hank Aaron died of side effects of the virus. He wanted to be an example to the black community, being a heroic sports figure to all Americans, but certainly to blacks. And so he took the vaccination and he's dead. 
Now, I'm not speaking about or against the vaccination itself. But what I am saying is this. You're seeing politicians of the left, like the mayor of Los Angeles and others, saying, well, black people and minorities are more at risk of COVID deaths. They have a higher percentage of deaths. So therefore, we have to vaccinate them first. Sounds scientific. Sounds reasonable. Sounds fair. Sounds like justice. What is it? A black person is a guinea pig to them. A black person is a guinea pig. How do we reduce future welfare roles in prison populations? You tell black Americans it's to their advantage and to have an abortion. Most, a disproportionately large amount of the abortion clinics in America are in and around the black community. Again, it's Margaret Sanger's parent, uh, Planned Parenthood philosophy. Kill off the blacks. You just want enough of them to have a social and political underclass who you can manipulate to keep yourself in office, kill the rest of them off. That's what they do. And that's what they're doing. <laughs> they're killing blacks. And they're going to keep on killing blacks. Now, the same people who are doing this are the same ones who talk about being woke <laughs> and about endemic racism and about white privilege. They'll talk about anything and everything except sin. Non-therapeutic abortion, fornication, impregnation outside of holy wedlock, Now, look, obviously, as a Christian, I do not believe in sex outside of marriage or before marriage. I just don't believe in it, obviously. But even if I did, which I don't, but even if I did, why would you use abortion? Why would you kill a fetus as a form of birth control when you have all these other things? You have everything from temporary vasectomy. You have you can seal off fallopian tubes. You can you know IUD devices, diaphragms, spermicide. You know you got all this stuff. Birth control pills. You got all this stuff to prevent pregnancy. Why do you need to kill a baby as a form of birth control? This is debaucherous. It's something that even people who believe in profligate sex don't need to do. Even if you reject my Judeo-Christian morality, and our Judeo-Christian morality, and even if you, you believe sex is okay before or outside of marriage, even if you believe that, which true Christians reject, but even if you believed it, why would you use abortion as a form of birth control? <laughs> you, you can go to a GYNOB or to a Planned Parenthood clinic and you can get birth control. These black men have what they call sugar babies and things like this just to get a woman pregnant. You know, they, 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 I've listened to them talk. I've listened to them. Yeah, I knocked the bitch up. That's what they say. Sorry to be so crude about it. Well, they don't support them. You're supposed to, in addition to supporting your own wife and kids, you're supposed to support his so he doesn't have to support his children. And that's what Biden and Obama represented, of course, and that's what goes on. Uh, the Democrats increased the black prison population in America. They increased it. They tripled it. It was Trump who bought prison reform. Then it goes on. The public school system in America are not like English public schools, which are private. In America, the public schools are the state schools. The state school system, the United States spends more per capita on students than any other country in the world. And they can't come near Singapore or Finland or these other countries 
the results get worse and worse and worse. You've got people graduating high school in the inner cities of America with an eighth grade reading level instead of a 12th grade reading level. You've got people voting who can't read the newspaper and don't know what they're voting for. They just vote for who they're told to vote for, deliberately keeping them stupid. You've got universities letting black students in above more qualified. Asia, Asians are particularly discriminated against over qualified Caucasians and Asians based on race to get what they call uh, uh, to end the disparity and get what, what, what they call, they have some crazy term they call it. They use a firm, something called affirmative action in order to get uh, a culture based on equality. And most of those black students, most of them are on academic probation. <laughs> if you allow someone to become a physician because you give them extra points for their skin color, that's racism in itself. But when they practice, where are they going to practice? The black community. What can an unqualified or underqualified physician do to patients? Name them, kill them. They vote for their own death. Now there is a solution. Private schools run by churches. Christian schools outperform the state schools. Charter schools in this country that call grant maintained outperform the state schools. But the teachers' unions in America, like the NUT here, it's a political campaign fund for the Democrats. So they're against private education. They're against homeschooling. They're against things that work in favor of perpetuating a system that doesn't work, throwing good money after bad because it holds minorities, particularly blacks, down. You hold them down. And then you can tell them they're victims of injustice. Well, they are. They're victims of an injustice perpetrated by the people they voted for. <laughs> One of the executive orders Biden signed was a freezing of Donald Trump's plan to give subsidized insulin to diabetes patients a disproportionately large amount of the people with diabetes in the United States are Afro-American. <laughs> okay. What's Biden doing? He's doing what the Democrats have always done, kill blacks. This is the party of Jim Crow segregation, apartheid in America. American apartheid school is called segregation, but it was nicknamed Jim Crow. And before that, it was the party of slavery. They're doing what they always did. Now, let's look at this. My family is a mixture of Irish, Catholic, and Jewish. This is something that's hard for white people to understand. Jews can be liberals or conservatives, Democrats or Republicans. They can be Green Party. They can be Libertarian Party. They can be independents. But you're not going to find any Jews joining the Nazi Party. No Jew would join a Nazi Party. You look at people from Armenia. Armenians is a big Armenian community in Israel and a big Armenian community in the United States. Armenians suffered a Holocaust under Turkish Muslims. They had a genocide. Over 2 million of them were killed in the, in, the, in the Armenian genocide by the Turkish Muslims. They killed the Christians. And this, what you see going on now again with Armenia and, and so on, it, 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 and Turkey is backing the Muslims. It's a continuation of what the Turks have always done to the Christianized population of Armenia with, with all this stuff. Um, 
Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan. It, it, it's, it's what's always gone on. An Armenian would never vote for an Islamic Turkish nationalist. Never. Let's talk about my Irish family. Irish people, they might vote, unfortunately, some of them will vote Sinn Féin, but they might vote Liberal Democrat, they might vote, you know, in, in the Republic of Ireland, they might vote Fine Foyle or Fine Gael in Northern Ireland, they might vote, you know, so Social Democrat, they might vote anything. But they won't vote for Orange Unionists. <laughs> No white person, no white person would ever vote for the party that did that to their people. They would never trust them. No matter what they said, they would never trust them. Oh, the Nazis are different now. That's what you say. We don't trust you. We don't believe you. <laughs> no white person would do that. It is a big mystery why black people vote Democrat, the party of Jim Crow and slavery. But what is the root of this? The root of this <laughs> is sin. Sin deceives. Now, I say that and I focus on Afro-Americans simply because of my anger that they are the biggest victims of the injustices. They're going to be the guinea pigs for the COVID virus. They are the ones who are going to be bamboozled, although they are bamboozled, into thinking abortion rights is the same as civil rights. And if you're against abortion, it means you're against, you know, <laughs> civil rights for blacks that they think is the same. It's unbelievable. I'm angry because of the victimization of black people by a corrupt political establishment. They get it the worst. It, it's, their kids are always going to get the worst education. The totally failed New York City school system is 86% non-Caucasian. It's failure. It continue to be a failure. They know because it's designed to fail. The killing of blacks is going to continue and get worse in Chicago, in Philadelphia, in Baltimore. A thousand blacks were murdered, murdered, shot dead by other blacks in 2020 in Chicago alone. That includes children on their way to school or coming home from school. A thousand? Like 4,000 have been shot, but 1,000 shot dead, nearly all black and nearly all shot by other blacks. Black Lives Matter said nothing. If there's one thing that Black Lives Matter doesn't care about, it's the lives of blacks. I care about blacks. I care about the lives of blacks. I care about those black babies being aborted. I care about blacks. I only wish Black Lives Matter cared about blacks. Very then true. they use the term Uncle Tom. They don't know what that term means. They never read the book, Uncle Tom's Cabin, written by a saved Christian, Harriet Beecher Stove against slavery. She was an abolitionist in the 19th century. They never read the book. Uncle Tom was not an Uncle Tom. He was flogged to death in the book by Simone Legree for refusing to disclose the hiding place of escaped slaves. Uncle Tom was not an Uncle Tom. There was another character in the book who was that, a subservient to the white establishment or the corrupt white establishment. His name was, was uh, Sambo. But Uncle Tom was not an Uncle Tom. But blacks used the term Uncle Tom because they never read the book. How'd they get this? Marcus Garvey, the founder of Rastafarianism, that says Haile Selassie was Jesus Christ, that says blacks living in Afro-Caribbean world in the United States and Britain are in Babylon, Babylon, 
and who smoked ganja sacramentally, the founder of that religion, with the you know the dreadlocks and the reggae music and that, said Uncle Tom was a black who's like Uncle Tom, subservient to whites. That was not what Uncle Tom. You never read the book. That Uncle Tom was not like that. They called him Uncle Tom because he was adopted into the family as an uncle to little Eva, white family with Christian values, accepted him as a family member. He, he, they called him Uncle Tom because he was an uncle to a little white girl whose life he saved. And they treated him like, you know, like family. They, people never read the book. And the book has strong Christian values in it. They don't tell you that Harriet Tubman, the Afro-American woman who was a organizer of the Underground Railroads to help blacks escape to the North, she was a Bible-believing Christian, a Bible-believing Christian. They don't tell you that so-called gun control was invented by the Ku Klux Klan in order to prevent black people from arming themselves to protect themselves against lynch mobs. They wanted the blacks disarmed, so they wanted gun control. Mm -hmm. It was invented by the Democrats, and it was invented by the Ku Klux Klan. They don't tell you that. Well... Hillary Clinton's mentor, Robert Byrd, was a grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. Bill Clinton's mentor, George Favor, was a rabid segregationist. Al Gore's father, senator from Tennessee, was a rabid segregationist who voted against civil rights. This is Jim Crow. But now you have Jim Crow with a smile and blacks are voting for them. The real Uncle Toms, which, which is a misnomer, they shouldn't be called Uncle Toms, they should be called Sambos. The real ones are Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. Or that Warnock guy, Raphael yeah. Warnock. Yeah. Or Maxine Waters, she's the Aunt Jemima. These are the real Uncle Toms. Uh, or who should be called Sambos. It's a terrible situation, a total misrepresentation of the book and of history. Uncle Tom was a positive character in the book, and he was flogged to death by Simone Legree for anti-slavery activities. It's unbelievable how they twist it. And to follow a guy like Marcus Garvey, a nut, here come the Babylon. I remember I used to smoke reefers, ganja, with Jamaican friends and that, and they had the dreadlocks and that, and listen to Bob Marley and the Whalers, and if the police were coming, oh, here come the Babylon, and they'd stash the reefer. <laughs> These were my friends. I know what they believed, you know. Before I was saved, that was the only religion that appealed to me. <laughs> <laughs> nope, it's horrible. But the root of it is sin. Mm. Now, let's look at India. The root of it is sin. The idolatry of Brahmanism, mm. which is not even Indian. It came from Persians, the Northwest yes. India. The plight of the <clears throat> Dalit, the outcasts. And when the Dalit begin to become Christians, and the Dalit begin, to, you know, to stop believing in Hinduism. The Brahmins lose their underclass. So the BJP comes along and says, we have to persecute the Christians because they give people liberation mm -hmm. from religious superstition and social bondage and economic slavery. It was the same in America. Harriet Tubman and these people, the founders of civil rights, they were Christians. But you got the stupidity. This brazen stupidity. The stupidity I have seen in India is unbelievable. 
How come in England and America, I have so many friends, Christian friends, physicians, computer software engineers, <laughs> scientists, business people, and they're all Asian Indians. How come once you take these people out of India and bring them away from Hinduism, they become successful within one generation? Mm. There's nothing wrong with the people, obviously. But there's something wrong with what they believe. It's sin. The sin of idolatry has caused this poverty and injustice in India. They don't even see it as injustice. They see it as karma. Mm -hmm. I could go on and on. What the Roman Catholic Church has done to white people and Hispanics in Catholic countries, I could talk about them the same way. Believe me. As I talk about Asians or Blacks. You really want to talk about stupidity? The stupidity of left-wing Jews mm. signing their own death warrant. Being in the same political party in America with Tiab, the radical Palestinian, with Omar, the Somalian fundamentalist. They're in the same party with Ellis. They're in the same party with Islamic anti-Semites. How stupid can you get? Why? Because they've rejected Yeshua. They are blind. They can't understand what the Torah means. It's sin. Mm. Leviticus 26, Deuteronomy 28, the terrible history of the Jews. What was done to them was satanic, of course, but God allowed it. Why? Read the Torah. Read Leviticus 26 or Deuteronomy 28. What happened to the Jews was because of sin and rejection of the truth in Jesus. Who's one of their own? India, it's the same thing. Rejection of the one true God. They even have a counterfeit of the Trinity. Sita and Rama and Shiva, they have a, Brahma, they have a counterfeit. Sin. Afro-Americans, it's sin. They've turned away from the faith of their grandparents and great-grandparents. Some of them are even stupidly turning to Islam. In the Judeo-Christian world, black slavery ended long ago. In the Islamic world, it still exists. In Chad, Mauritania, Sudan, Niger. Black African slaves owned by rich Muslims still exists. The East African trade, sl uh, slave trade, was much bigger than the West African one that brought the slaves to Brazil and the Caribbean and the United States. Much bigger. Why don't you see so many blacks then in Saudi Arabia and countries like this? Because the Muslims castrated them. They routinely castrated the black slaves. So they couldn't reproduce. They would just buy more and then castrate them. And this is the religion black people are now turning to for liberation? It's absurd. It's sin. You want to see real stupidity? I said this before. I will never forget the first time I was in Mumbai. And I saw a hungry child on a mound of garbage left there. And nobody cared because that was his karma. And not far away, they were feeding cows sacks of wheat. I saw it with my own eyes. The life of the cow was worth more than the life of the baby. This is sin. It's blindness. To see people in England and America and Canada going to yoga classes, going to ashrams, following gurus, 
They don't even know what it is. Mm -hmm. The stupid white people who believe they don't know what it is. Here's a book written by a Morial missionary in Thailand, Scott Noble, Resisting the Mystical. He is, you can get it through Morial. He is a missionary to Buddhists. One of our evangelists is an ex-Buddhist monk, came to faith through Scott's ministry. Scott wrote this book, Resisting the Mystical. He'll tell you. People are stupid. That Eastern mysticism has invented, invaded the Western church. Just like in Isaiah chapter 2, my people are filled with influences from the East. But now we're talking about believers. I remember showing pastors from India in Hounslow, England area, but they were from India, who were saved out of Hinduism, where they had families who still weren't Hindus. <laughs> And they looked at the videos of Toronto and the Toronto experience. They all said the same thing. This is Kundalini Yoga. Yeah. They knew what it was, and immediately they knew what it was. Immediately. Now you got Christians so stupid as to following Bill Johnson and Michael Brown, the fireman, and Rodney Howard Brown. This is insanity, John Honor. This is insanity. We should resist the mystical. No! White Christians can be just as stupid as anybody else. It's not about race, it's not about ethnicity. Asians, Caucasians, Black Africans, Hispanics. We can say the same thing about all of them. What's the common ground? Sin. Mm -hmm. Rejection of the truth. Not believing in the one true God and his word. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. That's why you see these things. Who controls it? Satan. The world was in the power of the wicked one. I thank God for the remnant of black people, and I know a number of them who truly love Jesus Christ. They will be saved. I thank God for the number of Hispanic people come out of Catholicism and truly love Jesus Christ. They will be saved. I love the remnant of people in any country or any civilization of Asians who've come to know Jesus Christ and trust him and follow him, they will be saved. I thank God that there's an increase in the number of believers in Catholic countries like Ireland. Long a stronghold of the demonic lie of Rome. They shall be saved. What's our common ground? Jesus Christ, the truth, his word. Their common ground of the other ones of all races, all ethnicities, <clears throat> is Satan, lies, and stupidity. Our common ground is Jesus Christ, truth, and the power of of a sound mind. Now I happen to be talking to Asians. I'm not picking on you. You might not put it this way, but you would agree with me. What you would say to those people who let that kid slowly die on the garbage mound in Mumbai while the cows were eating the sacks of wheat, shoot the cow and give the kid a steak. You see through it. When a Jew comes to know Yeshua as the Messiah, I remember my wife, she was freaking out. I showed her Daniel 9, the Messiah had to come before the second temple would be destroyed. And I showed her Isaiah 53, and she said to me, well, that's very interesting. Now can you show it to me in the Jewish scripture, the Old Testament? 
And I said, but she was my girl, uh, not even yet my girlfriend, you understand? I just witnessed it to her. Can you show it to me in the Jewish scripture, the Old Testament? And I said, but Pavia, this is the Old Testament. These are the Hebrew scriptures. Oh my God, don't the rabbis know this? I said, if they do, they don't want you to know it. Scales fell off her eyes. Veil was lifted. She saw her Messiah. Amen. I'd seen this with Catholics. I'd seen it with Hindus. I'd seen it with Muslims. There aren't many, but there are a handful, praise God, of Muslims who have come to Christ through my ministry. Only a handful now. But I thank God for every one of them. And when they see through the lie of Islam, <laughs> Oh, boy, they become radical for Christ. And they, they're willing to pay a price, and some of them do. <clears throat> well, we've got a whole a wonderful family of believers in New Zealand. They were Shia Muslims from Iran. And, uh, and some brothers in South Africa who came to pay through our ministry. I thank God for them. I wish there were more. Praise God there will be more. By the grace of Jesus, I by the grace of Jesus now, I've led a number of Jews to Christ, a fair number over the years, by God's grace. But I wish there were more. My biggest disappointment, almost. <laughs> I came to faith in 1972, but I didn't really begin walking with Jesus until 77, consistently. Over 40 years now, 87, 97, 07, 17, 44, 45 years. In 44 or 45 years, and it wasn't for lack of trying, it was not for lack of trying, there are exactly two Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> that I know came to faith through, through the ministry the Lord gave me. There are two. After 45 years nearly, I can only show you two Jehovah's Witnesses that came to faith through my preaching and that by God's grace. But when they see through the lie of the Watchtower Society, they can't believe they were bamboozled by such nonsense. Somebody say that our Catholicism cannot believe they were bamboozled by such nonsense. Somebody who comes out of Hinduism cannot believe they were bamboozled by such nonsense. Somebody who comes out of Islam cannot believe they were bamboozled by such nonsense. And when people are saved out of the woke culture that promotes abortion and the black community, they will not believe they were bamboozled by such nonsense. When a Jew gets saved, they see what rabbinic Judaism is. They realize Talmudic Judaism is not Judaism. It's Rabbinism. It's another religion pretending to be Judaism. Roman Catholicism is another religion pretending to be Christianity. When they see the truth of Yeshua, the Messiah, they realize they've been bamboozled in the synagogue and in the yeshiva. Bamboozled! Unless you had the privilege of growing up in a Christian family with at least one saved parent who told you the truth as a kid, unless you're one of those people, I'm not, my wife is not, my children are, you've been bamboozled. <laughs> you were a Hindu, you were bamboozled. You were a Sikh, you're bamboozled. You, you, you know, Amritsa, you're bamboozled. You believe in Talmudic Judaism, you're bamboozled. You believe in Islam, the Quran, the, the Hadith, 
You've been bamboozled. You believe in the Watchtower? You've been bamboozled. You believe in the Book of Mormons? You've been bamboozled. You believe in the Bhagavad Gita? You've been bamboozled. Satan is a master con man. He has all kinds of ways to con people. But his biggest con job is false religion. Wow. That's his penultimate. But his ultimate? His ultimate con job is sin itself. You will be like God. You will not die. <laughs> yeah. There are scientists today warning. Computer scientists, serious computer scientists are warning that artificial intelligence can get out of control. People will not be able to control it. And it will have the capacity to acquire knowledge and mutate on its own. Now, we know as Christians, this ultimately is setting the stage for the image of the beast in Revelation 13 and doing so quickly. But they're warning about this. AI has the possibility of acquiring knowledge on its own and integrating it into its data bank into its digital bank. We're going into a combination of quantum computing and AI, and nobody knows where it's going except Christians. We know it's going to Revelation 13. As we always said, the problem is not the science. The problem is fallen man. Anything fallen man can use for evil. He will use for evil. You can use nuclear energy, have isotopes to treat cancer patients, and you can use it for weapons for mass destruction. <laughs> Anything fallen man can use for evil will be used for evil. Doesn't matter its capacity for good. It'll be used for evil. It'll always be used for evil because the world's in the power of the wicked one. Well, what am I saying? Sin is like out-of-control artificial intelligence. It takes on an identity and a personality of its own that can deceive us. Emphasize the us. It deceives you and I as individuals when we let it. But it deceives societies. It deceives nations. It deceives races. <laughs> that is its power. It's so powerful you can't stop it. I don't even think man is going to be able eventually <clears throat> to prevent himself from creating a monster. With biogenetic engineering, with artificial intelligence, with quantum computing, we will create something that will threaten and dominate ourselves. But why? Because we already have adopted something that dominates ourselves, sin. Nothing is more powerful. Nothing is more powerful except Jesus Christ. <laughs>